Hey babes, I hope you're back. So, who is Isabel Gowdy? Well, she is known as the Witch of Aldern. And Aldern is outside of Nairn, which is about 10 miles away from me. So I have a thoroughly researched academic book with footnotes and all kinds about a very famous witch and a very local to me. So I'm very excited about this. Like I said before, I've been waiting two years for this book to be published. Um, one of the reasons that it was put back, I think, was that the original documents, or not the original documents, but a copy of the confessions did exist but was lost for quite considerable time. And um, when Ms Willby found them in the papers of um, Isabel Gowdy's landlord, they had to be authenticated. And I think that might have had something to do with the delay of the publication, but I can't guarantee. Plus the fact the more that she read on the subject, the bigger it got. She just couldn't just do the confessions and leave it at that. There's there's a much broader context to it. Now, I haven't even touched on like the full contents of the book. I am on page 63 at the moment. But I just had the book is only out this week, so hence my excitement. But um, she goes into... There's quite a lot of chapters. It's a big book. The construction of the confessions. There's this is the, the contents list. I'll just I've got ten minutes. I can take my time with this. It's okay. I was running through the last one and it was just ridiculous. I had about three goes trying to get that video together. Now look at this. This is one sentence. But this is in the language that the um the confessions were taken down in. Seventeenth century English. Um, by a woman who may or may not have been educated, I've yet to find out. But um, there's a very... I'm Scottish myself, obviously. There's a East Coast kind of dialect, which is known as Doric, and I can really hear the, the, the influence of Doric in the way that this is written. Um, it's a very local reference, and I think anybody outside of the area would be really struggling. I may be wrong on that get the book, read it, tell me what you think. But um, even within an individual confession, never mind between the confessions, the variation in spelling is quite interesting. <laughs> um, but it's... The, the, the case is remarkable because of what she said, um, the fact that it was so well documented and so fully documented and that these confessions still exist and can be analysed and torn apart and mulled over and argued and debated into the wee small hours. Um, so that is the, the Janet Breedheed is, uh, or Breedheed, who knows, she was a, a co-conspirator, another witch. And because it's an academic work, notes, works, cited, and index. Now I'm going to show you. This is a. Uh, this is what the actual confessions look like. I can't do a close up. I'm sorry. This camera just doesn't do zoom. The only zoom is with my hand. You know, um, most off-putting. But it shows you that the original confessions are written out in one big block of text, and everybody knows how difficult that is to read. There are gaps, look, just a big blank there. There are holes in the documents because they're so old, some of them. But um, Ms Wilby has done her best to make it readable. She's done actually the readership a huge favour by writing, doing a transcription of the documents with paragraphs, which she, she's just where there's a change of subject, she'll put one in and it breaks up the text and makes it so much easier to read. But um, you can see here the letters that are missing, the language, the variation in spelling. Um, there's the blank there. No U there, it's a V. But this is great because so few people will be allowed access to the actual documents. That would be for the realms of the academics. But at least here you can see more or less what they're reading and you can make up your own mind. I love that she put these in, all four of them. There's a certain element of repetition between the four, but 
maybe that's understandable. Like I say, I haven't finished the whole book. I'm only on page 63. But um, the fact that this is included in the book is, is wonderful. It's just fantastic. And reading it is the most... It's such an intriguing situation. You're just sitting there going, what is going on? I mean, obviously, by the end of the book, I'll have a better idea. Um, at least through the eyes of Ms. Willby, but she's uh, probably more qualified than me to talk about it. So, um, it's a fantastic book. I was so excited about it. It's a unique case. There's 370... Three, no, 3,700 and something cases in Scotland, uh, documented cases of the witchcraft trials. The Edinburgh University has a database that you can search online, but there is nothing like the evidence for any other trial like there is for this lady's, and she's local to me. It's just so fascinating. You could jump in the car and be there in a few minutes and, and look at the, the places that she's talked about and maybe stand somewhere where she did. It's just so exciting for me. I can't believe it's actually come out. It took ages. Now, it's an academic text, so it is quite um, expensive, even for a paperback, but thoroughly worth it, as far as I'm concerned. Um, I can't recommend this enough for people. Um, obviously, it's a, a pet subject of mine. I like to look at um, local... Um, stuff. I don't see the point. I, it doesn't work for me getting involved in a tradition or a culture that I can't have immediate access to. Um, I am Scottish, so it makes sense that I look at Scottish witchcraft. Um, and there's only really historical, there isn't a tradition, there's not a sort of modern Scottish thing that agrees with me. I have to look into history, I have to look into the documents like this and kind of use that as a baseline and then and make my own path from that. Some people, Raymond Buckland to name one, has had attempted to do a new Scottish tradition of witchcraft and I'm sorry, it just doesn't sit with me at all. Um, I'm sure he means well, but to me he's just a professional author out to make money. I hope that doesn't offend anybody. That's just my opinion of him. Um, I find this side of things far more interesting and far more um, what gratifying is that the word beneficial uh, there's more material there's more source material here than anything that he could come up with um, but that's just my personal take on it everybody has their own and it's always interesting to find out what that is um, yeah, the visions of Isabel Gowdy, which of Aldern. She actually wasn't from Aldern, she was just tried in Aldern. And there's an, another thing, myth, bu myth, myth busting. Myth busting. It's really difficult to say. <laughs> I'm so tired, I need to go to sleep. Right, I'm going to try and upload this. Uh, thanks for watching, if you still are. And um, I hope you might consider buying some of the books. Cheers. <laughs>